previous video we discussed questions regarding placement so in this part we'll be discussing questions regarding other categories so the first question is uh, many uh, participants have asked like what is the actual difference between reflection spot and chunking of video they somewhat seem similar okay so this is a good question and it, they are not similar so chunking the videos so think about it this way when you decide to take how much to teach in a lecture when you plan a lecture you decide how much of the content you are going to deliver in the first class how much you will deliver in the second class you do that right so this uh, parceling of the content into the first lecture class in the second lecture class this is called chunking of the content now when you translate this into a mooc setting what happens is in a mooc your learning dialogues are maximum how many minutes long maybe around 6 six, 6 six to 8 to 10 minutes i would say so um, when you have to fit in content into 8 to 10 minutes automatically you will be now deciding how much of the content to pack into a 8 to 10 minutes long learning dialogue so let's see an example on screen so on screen you see an example of covalent bonding from chemistry suppose i am going to teach covalent bonding to higher secondary students that is class 11th and 12th so i decide that in one led i am going to cover single double and triple covalent bonds but i won't have much time left after these three sub topics so i'll push the polar covalent bonds and non polar covalent bonds discussion to the next led now if i was teaching undergraduate level chemistry i can have more content to deliver for triple covalent bonds so then i can decide to have triple covalent bond itself as a single led so the basic thing to remember is in chunking the content as an instructor you decide how much of the content you should pack in into your learning dialogue so that it is easy also for the students to follow you now what are reflection spots suppose now you see on screen we had decided that led1 will be single covalent double covalent and triple covalent bonds now in this led once i have decided this is going to my content now in this led i decide where to insert my reflection spot questions suppose i decide i am going to have a reflection spot question right after i have taught them double covalent bond then again another reflection spot question i want to ask immediately after triple covalent bond maybe a question on comparing between the double and the triple covalent bond energies so this is the difference i hope you got the difference between led uh, chunking of the content for leds and then placing of reflection spots within a single learning dialogue uh, so the next question is regarding identifying where exactly like how to identify reflection spot for a given topic yeah that's a very interesting question i think that's also very important how do you identify where to insert a reflection spot so if you recall the learning dialogue on reflection spots there it was told that you have to insert you can insert reflection spots at uh, logical pause points and structural pause points now structural pause points are very easy to identify have you ever experienced when you are teaching in a face to face classroom that you have lectured for too long and you are losing your students attention then you break into a question right do you have any doubts you stop and ask them such questions right similarly in a mooc setting now you can't see your learners in front of you so you make the judgment if you feel you have talked too long in this learning dialogue without breaking into a reflection spot then go back and see where you can insert a reflection spot that's the structural pause point but the more important from the learning point of view is the logical pause points for example i have taught them a concept and i want them to now think of examples 
of that concept's real life application. So I am going to pause a, uh, pose a reflection spot question there, pause and ask, can you come up with an example of where you have seen the application of this concept in your real life? There is another way you can locate logical pause points. For example, you have taught them something important, some very important principle about that concept. Then immediately stop and give them an activity so that they can self-assess how much they have understood of the application of that principle. Before as an instructor, you proceed and delve deeper into the concept. So these are the logical pause points. Always remember the purpose of the reflection spot is to give an opportunity to the learners to do micro application of the concept just taught. So I hope it's clear. Yeah, from okay. that much. So the another question on reflection spot is can reflection spot have uh, like multiple scope for multiple correct responses? Yes, you can have reflection spots where you can, which has multiple correct answers. For example, the question that we see on screen, this is a reflection spot question taken from the NPTEL course on demystifying wireless network. If you read the question, this says that there is a shipment to be made from source to destination. But the challenge is the shipment is heavy for a single person. However, it has to be delivered correctly on time. So which is a viable solution? Option A is as all shipments are modular, that is you can break it down into pieces, they can be taken in parts by the same person on multiple trips. Or option B, which is since the shipments are modular, you can take in the parts by multiple people in individual trips. So which one is the solution, valid solution for this challenge? Now if you think about the answers, both of them are correct. Option A is also a valid solution, option B is also a valid solution. But when you give feedback, as an instructor you will be explaining why option B is a more optimal solution than option A in terms of time plus cost. So yeah, your reflection spot questions can have multiple correct answers. So the next question is regarding can we use kind of small puzzles, addition or omission or match the following kind of statements or odd man out kind of thing or also like rearranging the statement or small gaming activity as reflection spots. Absolutely. So these are really good ideas which have come from previous participants of our LCM course. You can definitely have a range of types of reflection spots and it's always advisable to give a variation in the type of questions you are asking. You can have questions on odd man out, give them puzzles, think of a gaming way or match the following. These are good ideas and I think we should be trying these in reflection spots. Thank you. It is interesting to see how my reflections are validated and sometimes what the expectations of the tutor have been as it is not the real time interaction. Yeah, so this question was posed last time in the LCM course. So what the, the learner asked was that it is it will be interesting for me to see how my responses to the reflection spot questions compares with what other learners have given as response. But that is not happening in the current format of the reflection spots. So and she called this as a passive reflection spot. So if you want your learners to be able to discuss the answers of their reflection spots, then of course you can post the reflection spot question and ask them go to the discussion forum and post your responses to this reflection spot and discuss among each other. This is a good question and you can think about it. Just post a reflection spot and ask them to go to the forum and discuss. That will be a nice way to answer or resolve this type of uh, purposes. On 
Now, same issue with regard to the closing the loop. So, how do you close the loop of the reflection spot? Yeah, this is a very important question. Uh, when we are taking our LCM workshops also, we have seen many of the faculty faltering at this point. So, you have a multiple choice question given as a reflection spot. For example, see the question from the NPTEL course on wireless networking. So, you have been given three options, option A, B and C. Now, you pose as an instructor, you pose this as a reflection spot question. And then what most of the faculty do is, they say, yes, so option C is the correct answer and they proceed. Now, pause here for a moment and think if you give this level of feedback that option C is the correct answer, how much learning will happen for the students? So, what is advisable is when you are closing the loop after posing the reflection spot, that is when you are giving the feedback, you give explanation as to why option A and option B are incorrect. So, say option A and option B are incorrect because hence option C is the correct answer. When you give such corrective, constructive feedback, then students understand where they went wrong. Therefore, uh, definitely when you are giving a feedback, keep this point in mind. Don't just say option C is the correct answer and proceed. Give explanation as to why the other options are incorrect. And uh, we know that the reflection spot is not a graded one. So, how can a facilitator know that learner has actually understood the concepts that have been discussed? Yeah, so uh, this is a valid question from an instructor's point of view. But remember reflection spots in a learner centric MOOC is for the learners to self assess their understanding of the content in a learning dialogue. As a facilitator, as an instructor, definitely you would want to know how much they understood. For that, you have the learning by doing activities for uh, which is there in the LCM and which is going to come up next week in the LCM course. So, this concludes the part 2 of our discussion on questions on reflection spot. I hope we have been able to resolve many of the queries which have, we have been receiving over the years about reflection spots. Uh, in case you have further queries of reflection spots, please post them in the discussion forum of the course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.